I've seen voice agents that took weeks to build completely fall apart on the first interaction with a real user, speaking from experience here. And it's almost always one of these five mistakes. So today I'm breaking down the exact mistakes that destroy the performance of your voice agents in production. And these are based on real client projects and community feedback from builders who have had to learn these lessons the hard way. I'm Alejo from Amplify Voice. I've been a data scientist and AI engineer for the last eight years. And through real client deployments, we've seen mistakes that I do and, and our developers do that we've had to learn from. And I'm sharing those lessons with you today. The thing that I've specialized in is fixing and perfecting voice agent deployments. The way I do that is through 90 minute deep dives that you can book by clicking the one on one link below. So if there's something you're struggling with that you can't seem to figure out, book a time with me and I'll be happy to help. Now let's get into it. The gap between a demo agent and a production ready agent is understanding how real users are going to talk with your voice agent. These five mistakes happen mainly because us as builders are too focused on how we think the user should interact versus how the user is actually going to interact. And the first mistake that I see is no proper structure for your system prompt. This is one example of what a proper structure looks like. You are defining a role and an objective. You're specifying some personality traits. You're giving context. What is this call? Is this call inbound or outbound? What do we know about the user? Then instructions. A lot of you have very, very specific instructions and logic, but they're not packaged the right way for the LLM to be able to execute on them effectively. So under instructions, we want to add some subsections like communication guidelines, how to spell emails or say numbers out loud, and of course, how and when to use tools. Then the last two sections that I recommend are stages where you give the agent awareness of what is going to happen next. And then example interactions where you give the agent example phrases that it could use given different situations. So if your problem looks like a list of instructions that you're hoping the LLM will interpret correctly, because of course you're reading them, they make sense to you. Well, that's not quite right. Just adding these sections is going to improve the performance of your agent. If you're curious about how I build my prompts following this structure, I use this master prompt uh, that I will link above for this video. You can go check it out if you're interested in upgrading your own prompt structure. And this leads me to big mistake number two, which is you don't have a testing strategy. As builders, we build the prompt. We know what to say in order to make the agent respond like we want it to respond. But that's not a useful voice agent for anybody. So my two biggest recommendations is for you have a proper reflection and a diagram, a visual diagram that helps you understand from when the call starts, what is going to be the behaviors of the users and whether you're building this for yourself or for a client, have conversations with who those users and users might be, who is going to be talking with this voice agent. So you can understand what brand branches might be taken during that conversation. Not only what functions you'll be, you'll have to handle, but how are you going to say book appointments? What is the information you're going to need to ask for? Do you need their email or is there a different way that you could do that? Say by using the phone number. These are all the thoughts that if you jump straight into building, you won't really get a chance to reflect on. And that reflection is what allows you to build a robust voice agent that doesn't break the moment it goes into production. And how I recommend going about testing is having a conversation in the test chat where we're just following the flow of the conversation and then using this hidden feature, which is the debug feature in retail. And you can regenerate multiple answers from the voice agent to see what it would answer. That way you start getting assurance, not only because you tested it once and it worked, but because you're testing every path. And now it's really easy to test every path 10 times. So you verify what the responses are and out of 10, eight times the, um, the, the agent answered this and the two other times the agent answered this, which is essentially the same. So I'm happy I can move on to the next path in the conversation. That is one way to do it and gives you the most hands-on understanding of how your agent is working. Then when you are happy with how the agent is working, I do recommend that you set up simulations because your current version of your agent is not the final version of your agent. You're going to make changes and simulations allow you to set up some tests that check. I changed my agent. I run the simulations again. Is the agent still working, behaving like I expected it to behave? 
so you can take steps forward without taking steps back. I did a full deep dive on retail simulation testing, and we'll also link that above. And then, of course, there's level three, which is Secura, which is what we do for every single client, which allows you not only to have simulations by text, but also calls. And you can set up very sophisticated evaluators that allow you to really test your agent and, and all the different paths, all the different behaviors that you should have. Start with manual testing. I always recommend starting with manual testing because you getting a feel of what your agent is doing allows you to go modify the agent in the right way. If you start out trying to do 20 different tests, you are going to get overwhelmed with the amount of information and not have any actionable feedback that you can do. Not like when you debug and regenerate 10 answers and it's telling you right there, this is the response. And then you can assess, is this correct or do I need to change something? The mistake number three is not having any interruption handling. And most people think that interruption handling only happens in the prompt. If, you know, if the user uh, interrupts you, then stop talking. That's not something you can control in the prompt. That is something that is controlled by the infrastructure, by retail. But there is a setting you can change, and it's in speech settings. This responsiveness metric allows the agent to not interrupt the user by increasing the latency of the voice agent. And I know that sounds counterintuitive, but if you increase the latency, then the user is going to be interrupted less often. But this depends on your use case. You have to understand your use case. Are you going to be speaking with people that speak very slowly or people that are in a rush? So play around with the setting and you might be surprised because lowering the responsiveness might actually increase the effectiveness of your voice agent. We are now at a point in this technology where the voice agent is too fast and where every component in the pipeline is optimized for speed. What's most important is the user experience, the user not being interrupted. And also that when the user wants to interrupt the AI, it can. And that's what interruption sensitivity is for. There's two sides to this. You can increase interruption sensitivity if you want the voice agent to be snappy. And if I, if the AI is speaking and then I want to interrupt it, it immediately stops. Then you would increase interruption sensitivity. But I don't recommend that. Why? Because then this means that background noise is also going to interrupt the voice agent and is going to be very sensitive to that background noise. So I usually have interruption sensitivity quite low, around 0.7. But don't just copy this, understand your use case. Who are you going to be speaking with? If it's older people that your voice agent is going to have conversations with who generally speak slower, you might want to have lower responsiveness. So the AI agent doesn't butt in when the person is speaking slowly or thinking. Similar for interruption sensitivity. If you have some insurance use case, somebody got in a car crash, then you, there's gonna be a lot of background noise, so you will wanna have interruption sensitivity be lower. So the AI doesn't stop speaking from some background noise. That flows to mistake number four, which is no fallback or error recovery plans. Let me give you an example. The user says something, the voice agent misunderstands what the user said and what was transcribed was just gibberish. It doesn't really make sense what the user said and the voice agent, what does it do? Well, the voice agent responds. But is that response gonna be good? Well, probably not because the, the agent misunderstood what the, what the user was saying. But the mistake is not only in the transcriber. The mistake is that in your communication guidelines, you didn't add a section for how to ask for clarification when the user asks something ambiguous. Something like if the user says gibberish or something ambiguous, ask for clarification. Something as simple as this can avoid what's called catastrophic failures. Those are failures in which the quality of the user experience plummets, like calling the user the wrong name or hallucinating information. So these fallbacks depend on your use case. Are you booking appointments? Well, have you tested uh, the different paths that the user could take? Because the user could provide a time that works for them or ask for a time that works for us. Are you handling both of those situations? Or are you being so strict with your instruction that there's only one path that the user can follow? So get out of your builder mindset and get into the user mindset. Now we go to mistake number five. Let's say something does go wrong in the conversation. How are you gonna find out? You can and should go listen to every single individual call, but then after you listen to a bunch of calls, do you really wanna keep listening to the successful calls? 
Well, probably not. Those are just following what we call a happy path. They're just going well. You really want to focus on the calls that aren't going well. There are automated systems like Secura who will do that observability for you. Or you can also set up a very, very simple N8N workflow. And I've shown this one before in, a, in the N8N series where you're handling the end of call reports. And based on, on the analysis of the AI agent, if there was a mistake, you can have an if node that if true, it sends a message to your Slack or whatever messaging system you use with a call ID or a link to the recording so you can catch mistakes as soon as they happen. We like Secura because it's already all integrated into it uh, in the observability and shows us all the mistakes that were made, how to fix them, etc. But you may or may not need this level of sophistication yet. The whole point is you want to track performance. You want to track metrics. So in your Google Sheets, you might have a column for successful, yes or no. Appointment booked, yes or no. Agent failure, wow, revolutionary. Agent failure, yes or no. So you give the agent context of what this call is about and it will be able to understand, oh yes, this was a failure from the agent side. The point is that if you can't track it, then you can't fix it. And that's how you can avoid the five catastrophic mistakes that most builders do by having a proper system prompt structure, having a testing strategy, understanding your flow, balancing the interruption handling, having error recovery plans in the conversation, and then tracking how well the conversation went and if any mistakes were, were made in a Google Sheet in your database with notifications so you can get on them right away. And trust me, clients are much happier when you find the mistakes and are already fixing them and let them know instead of them letting you know that something went wrong. And if you want any deeper dives into any of the topics I just touched on, please comment them below because I do read every single comment, reply to every single comment, uh, and we take it to heart because what you need is what we want to share. And in return, all I ask is that you like and subscribe so other people can see these videos too and so we can learn together. And if you're stuck, that's normal. That's a normal process of building. Feel free to book a while one with me below and I will dedicate 90 minutes of your time to deep dive into what's wrong with your agent and fix it right there on the spot. Thank you for watching and remember to never stop prompting.